This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast to order, veteran owned coffee company. They are fair trade certified USD organic, located in Perrysburg, Ohio. Integrity is their core value to do the right thing even when no one is looking. Uh, they do have coffee available in K Cup, free shipping over $50, and you can save even more with a subscription service. Check out all the great coffees they have over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. And just a quick self-promotion here. That is our last Iron Bean ad read. So if you'd like to advertise on the Sloopcast, go ahead and hit us up at sloopcast at gmail.com. That is Sloopcast. You probably know how to spell it. It's above my head right now on the YouTube vi version of this. And uh, at gmail.com. Is she wearing Jordans, Austin? I'm just trying to figure out. <laughs> Reebok. Dude, Re Reebok's becoming like a thing again, right? Just because any everything that old, that's old becomes new. Yeah, Champion's the weirdest one to me. Because Champion always felt like boomer athletic apparel. And then all of a sudden, it's just a thing again. And it's just like, oh, I guess I'm the old one for not wearing champion. All right, Jared, we got the defense to talk about today. So let's go ahead and hop into it. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloop Guest. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right, Jared. How are you doing today, sir? You know, uh, we were talking about athletic apparel um, and uh, apparently robbing old William, uh, old Williams, old women <laughs> or old Williams. Maybe that's her last name. I don't know. In the chat. And I'm I'm starting to wonder about this uh, community of ours. Starting to. <laughs> Fair. All right, Jared. All right, um, let, last going. episode, we talked about the offense. Here today, we get to talk about the defense. Yep, the you know that 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 same defense that everyone was holding their breath for every time that they came out into the field to see if they can stop whoever was they're going up against here. Whoever didn't matter. <laughs> yeah, um, fun times exactly, Gangland. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it was not great last year. It was not uh, all that better or it was actually considerably maybe worse the year before that. Um, it's it's going to be better now. Like, I'm just going to go ahead and say that. Is it going to be everything that Ohio State needs it to be to make a run at a national title? I don't know. Is it going to be better than last year? Yes. I'm just going to, I'm going to go ahead and say it's going to be a better defense than it was last year. Mm -hmm. That's, I... And quite frankly, I don't even know if that's that much. That's not even a hot take, right? I mean, that's that's just saying a yeah, lot no, about I, last year's defense. Yeah, low bar, no, exactly, I, Austin. Yeah. All right, let's let's get into a few things that Ryan Day, a um, few quotes here that Ryan Day had about the defense. First, first off, about the Leo position on the Buckeyes defense. Day says Ohio State hasn't dove into that much yet. Uh, says that package has been pretty dynamic at Oklahoma State and Duke under Jim Knowles. Now and I do I do remember when Jim Knowles was at Duke for a short period of time when I first moved to North Carolina. That was actually probably best Duke football they've ever had. Yeah. Um, when was when was at Pew? He, he was at Duke before he was at Oklahoma State. Yes. Um, yeah, it's the, the the only knock really on Jim Knowles is that it takes it historically because he completely turned around Duke's defense and he completely turned around Oklahoma State's defense. Um, it took him a few years at each location. And he's not going to have that luxury at Ohio State, but he also has the luxury of talent now. So hopefully, you know, that's, you know what I mean? Like, Oh, why did it take him so long to get those defenses turned around? Well, he had to, you know, go get talent. 
And that's not an issue here. Because, yeah. like, you can say whatever you want to say, because I know a lot of people basically have given up on def certain defensive players. Yeah. And I'm just letting no, you guys not. know, like, just look at Pete Warner. Just do me a favor and look at how, how great Warner has played has you know played in his rookie year at the NFL. He's already a better pro than he all than he ever was. Than he ever yeah. was a player at Ohio State. And you know, Borland was on the Vikings was it was the Vikings, right? Roster the entire season. I uh, he was on and off the practice squad, sure. So not like the roster roster, but point is is that We've focused a little too much on the talent issues at Ohio State when, to me, a lot of it has to do with the coaching and the situations they were put into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's not even that Warner is average now. He's actually just really good. Yeah. As a rookie. <laughs> Uh, yeah, That's I think it. Pro Football Focus had him as the highest graded rookie linebacker, but Pro Football Focus is also like stupid. So I mean, it's but still, to even if it's even you know whatever, like take it with a grain of salt. But the fact that he was even considered or even that highly ranked is still incredibly noteworthy. Even if I don't think a lot of Pro Football Focus. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's see. Next, next comment. You can here. say that about Tough Borland if you want to, Austin. Fact of the matter is, is that the Vikings kept him in Minnesota all year, and I know that's not like a huge bar, you know, getting moved on and off the practice squad as a as a rookie, but it's he still was he he, was, he collected a paycheck all year from Minnesota which I think is much higher of an achievement than most people would have predicted for him. All right. All so right, a lot of, a lot, a lot has been made about the Leo position, um, about these new safety positions. And I'm here to tell you, like, don't worry about it. Like the Leo is just the, is just the weak side defensive end. And like, Oh, well now he's a Leo. What does that mean? He's kind of a linebacker. What does that mean? He'll drop back into coverage sometimes. I saw Zach Harrison drop back into coverage last year. My, my, my biggest thing that I want the defense here is just to not be predictable. That, that's that's what hurt them so much last yeah. year. And it's got to be whether you have a, a, um, a bullet position or Leo or whatever the case is, just mix it up. Mix up, get your best players on the field. Uh, yeah, but to be fair, Gangland, one, it, it was an abomination because of the defense as a whole, right? Not not the concept, um, or at least that version of the concept. Um, and JTT should never be the the defensive end dropping into coverage. Mm-hmm. All right, let's see. Uh, but Next comment to me, here from... Sawyer could do it. Harrison could do it. Um, and again, like it's not, it's like a short zone. It's not like they're asking him to play man. Zach Harrison was supposed to be a great rusher. He, he is. Zach Harrison's going to surprise a lot of people this year. Zach Harrison's going to surprise a lot of people this year. I, I blame so much of his lack of production on the defense. He was supposed to be the next young Urbosa. Let's see what happens this year. I'm not saying he's going to reach young Urbosa levels, but just let's see what happens this year. That's all I'm going to say. Let's see what happens this year. Yep. I think it's a surprise. A lot of people, when I said there's a lot of guys on this defense that people have written off already, but that the issue was not with them, but with the scheme, Zach Harrison's near the top of that list. Mm -hmm. Exactly, gang. Uh, safeties. On the safety position, they, they say that the coaching staff is still trying to figure out how, how guys fit exactly in the defensive back. Field? 
in the defensive backfield. Yes, yeah. you're right. <laughs> um, yeah, again, so, oh, we have this bandit position, and we have this adjuster position, and you have yeah, the, we, I don't even and, remember the third one. Yeah, Jared, Jared and I talked about this to an, um, to an extent of a few weeks ago, too, about, I think we went to the depth chart and looked at who can play the safety and even talked about like a three, three deep safety as well. And who, which be is playing what they're saying all that. they're going to do. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of, there's just a lot of players here and some players, some Buckeye fans don't want to see, see on the field anymore. Cause they've already seen enough of them. Well, I but, think it, if one or two of those guys, I think it's probably pr- pretty justified, um, <laughs> but I, I don't think Ohio state's hurting at safety. Especially considering one, like Josh Proctor just isn't, isn't the thing yet. Like he's back and he's with the team, but he's not going full go yet. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's, it is what it is with Josh Proctor right now, but he'll be back for the fall is, is the important part. Right. And then you have Hickman and court Williams and everyone's like, Oh, there's no more bullet now. Now there's a bandit. Well, I, the bullet is the bandit and bandit is the bullet until I see evidence on the film that tells me otherwise, that's my opinion. Like we, we freak out over the, the, Oh, the, the weak side defensive ends of Leo now. Oh, the, the bullets of bandit now until mm-hmm. I see evidence on the field that tells me that those things are significantly different. Yeah. I, I'm not and, going to believe that they're significantly different. Yeah, but let's not forget about the transfer McAllister too. See, see what he can do while um, transferring to Ohio state. Absolutely. Um, so Proctor will be ready for the fall ransom. Not again, not with the team at the moment. will be ready for the fall. Um, McAllister's in and will contribute right away from Oklahoma state. Uh, Cam Martinez is back there playing safety. He'll probably play more your man. He's a, he's a, he's a tran he's a transferred. Is that the correct word to use here? Um, converted. That's the word I wanted. Uh, cornerback. So he's, he's a cover guy. So he'll be playing not so much in your run support, but more in your, your man support and your deep support. Um, They're the same position. You don't know that yet. Like even Ryan Day said it. I mean, in the quote that you can say that. What, what are you got? Are you, are you saying I'm mispronouncing McAllister? No, no. To say? Keep going, Jared. No, okay. you're good. Okay. Um. Even Ryan Day said in the quote that Kyle read that they they're chill they're still so you can be like oh proctor and and mcallister they played the same well maybe they won't <laughs> come september maybe they won't that's it that's it's really that simple like they'll they'll figure it out if those are two of their three best safeties they'll both be on the field And again, like you have, you have Hickman and Williams who are your bullet slash bandits or whatever. And then, like I said, Martinez is a great cover guy. Um, Proctor's back. McAllister's with the team now. Ransom will be back. They they have a glut of talent at safety position, which feels weird to say after last year, but it's true. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's, let's do one more here. One more here from coach day. Uh, they says what says he watched Sunny Styles play in the state basketball championship game. Lauds his explosiveness and says he's been a big help in recruiting other players for Ohio State. Yeah, um, Sunny Styles would be great. Um, I don't I don't expect a ton from him this year in particular. Um, you know, I, I think we do see Ronnie Hickman probably leave for the NFL after this year. He's a junior this year. I expect him not to pl- come back and play as a senior. And at that point, you'll have Court Williams probably take over the bullet, bandit, whatever. Um, <laughs> and, and then you'll have Styles basically rotating in and also taking reps behind Court Williams at that spot. That that's That's how I see that playing out, but we'll see. Yeah. 
All right, Jared, I think this is a good point here to take a quick ad break and, and hear from our good friends over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Oh, man, this is the last time I get to do this. I'm a little bit sad. Um, this is the last time I get to do this, so here are my favorite coffees. All right. These are my favorite coffees from the Iron Bean Coffee Company. In no particular order, we have the Ride or Die, which is a medium roast coffee. Um, the Cast Iron, which is also a medium roast coffee. Now, if you're saying, Jared, I like a, me uh, I have a medium roast are fine, but I'm a dark roast guy. What's your favorite dark roast coffee? My favorite dark roast coffee is the Drink from the Skull of Your Enemy. Um, I There's a lot. I've not disliked any of these coffees. I've not disliked any of them. I, I, they're all great, and it's all just a matter of taste and what you like. But if you want to know what my three favorite coffees are from the Iron Bean Coffee Company, it is those three coffees. Now, Jared, I want to get a medium roast, but you gave me two medium roasts. Is it the ride or the is it ride or die, or is it the cast iron? I don't know. <laughs> don't make me choose. It might be the ride or die, but man, that I might change. I might have a different opinion tomorrow. So, you know, it doesn't matter who starts. It matters who gets the most reps between the ride or die and the cast iron. That's all I'm going to say about that. So you can yeah. find your new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, Kyle, uh, do we have questions next? Do we have yeah. more day quotes uh, we have let, let's let's do one more day quote and then we'll we'll get into all the questions. We'll get into all the questions here. Uh, let's see here on on Tyleek Williams and the Buckeyes defensive tackles. Uh, Day says the great ones they can go for extended periods of time. If you can't, you'll get will get you out. Yeah. Um... Austin, did you just give us more money in Patreon? I just saw that. Uh, that's... That's a lot. All right. Um, thank you. I never, I never got to do the Twitch streamer thing of thanking someone. Uh, <laughs> I feel like a Twitch streamer now all of a sudden. Uh, thank you, Austin. Um, the... Yeah, thanks for the dono. Thanks for the, I don't know how, how many it's years at this point, Austin, I was about to say, thanks for the three months, but it's probably been like four years at this point or something. <laughs> um, don't let my ego get too high. If my ego, like Twitch streamer is not my idea of letting my ego get too high. Um, sorry, Austin totally threw me, but for once on a good way. Oh yeah. Tyleek Williams. Uh, Tyleek Williams is down 40 pounds. Four zero. Four zero pounds. I, for, for once doing a good thing. Normally you get me off of my stride doing a bad thing. Yeah, he's down 40 pounds. He looks he looks ready to take some heads off. Yeah, so one of the things Kyle and I said a lot last year, and we weren't alone, a lot of people were saying it, was like, man, why isn't Tyleek Williams on the field more? We need more Tyleek Williams. We need more Tyleek Williams. Well, Ryan mm -hmm. Day and Tyleek Williams both basically told us last week why. We weren't getting more. T no, he is not an NFL DE. He's a defensive tackle. Um, you know, he's he's like before it was like, oh, is he a nose tackle or is he a three tech? Well, guess what? He's a three tech. Um, he's a three tech now with that sort of speed. He is a three tech now. Um, but basically, the answer was given to us um, essentially saying. Well, he was only good for like two or three plays. He just wasn't in the state of conditioning that he needed to be in to be someone who started or who stayed out on the field for long periods of time. Mm -hmm. He he just wasn't that guy. Um, as a freshman, as a freshman, right? Um, now he's down 40 pounds and his conditioning is insanely improved. So if you wanted to see more Ty Lake Williams, I think the uh, barrier that was preventing that has been lifted. I don't remember gangland. Did he come in for the spring last year? I don't remember. I, I do. I do not remember. 
I want to say yes. Like, I want to say yes. Um, Hall, no, Hall didn't, which is, I think, is why we didn't see more Hall last year, which is probably mm-hmm. why uh, we had more Ty Leak instead of Hall. But if you're, if you're, you know, let's go ahead and just get there since, since you brought him up. You're going to see some Michael Hall Jr. this year. He's coming in, redshirt freshman, uh, second-year player. You're going to see some Michael Hall this year, and you're going to like it. Just letting you know right now, you're going to see some Michael Hall this year, and you're going to like it. Um, I would not be surprised if your three-tech defensive tackles are essentially those two guys from the uh, from the 2021 class. 2020 class. I I've lost track of years during the pandemic. Um, those two guys, th- those, those two second year guys will be like, I think you're one and two, your a and B your one, a your one B three tick defensive tackles this year. Uh, Vincent, I think has nose tackle on lock. Um, and you probably see Ty Hamilton. Maybe as his backup uh, or Jerry on cage. One mm-hmm. of those two as your backup nose tackle. But I think the defensive, the defensive tackles especially tend to run at least too deep. So I, that's, that's how I see it. Yeah. All right. Um, some questions here. Uh, talk, talking a lot about defensive ends and tackles here. Got a, got a few questions here. Got one from Buckeye Esquire. How many sacks for the defensive tackles? How many for defensive ends? And how many for non-linemen? I think you'll see an increase of sacks from linebackers this year because the linebackers will, in this system, play a lot more attack, a lot more downhill. So I'm not saying it's going to be a lot, but it, it, you should see an increase of linebacker sacks this year. Um. How many for each position? Um, defensive ends, I'd like to see get near 20. Um, defensive tackles. Maybe close to a dozen. Yeah, I think 12 is a good number. Um, and then for non-linemen, I'd probably, probably close to 20 again. Hmm. Again, was it that high before? Well, no, no, no. I'm at 20. Oh, like again, because we, yeah, no, it won't be nearly that high. I just, Ohio State doesn't really, you know, we, I, Gangland, I, I do think we're going to blitz a lot more, but I think a lot of that blitzing is just going to prevent the double teaming of the Tyler Williams, yes. Jack Sawyers of the world. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Like, I, I know how this system worked at Oklahoma State, but Oklahoma State had a different talent profile than Ohio State has. Ohio State's pass rushing talent is still along the defensive line, which was not necessarily the case at Oklahoma State. Um, so to me, a lot of the blitzing will be to free up your Zach Harrison's, Jack Sawyer's, JTT's, Tyleek Williams, so on and so forth. Just preventing double teams and throwing some weird looks at the offensive linemen instead of just running straight at him, which is what we did for the last two years. Because when you when you take a guy who is only ever a cornerback coach and you make him the defensive coordinator, he, he forgets that line... Uh, what's... Uh, uh, wow, I'm blanking. Um, <laughs> stunts. The line stunts are a thing. I got there like a half second before you gangland, but thank you for the assist. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, I, I'm, I'm very optimistic about what we're going to see from this defense. I'm very, very optimistic, especially in the front seven. I think we're going to see the defensive line return to the form of what we expected from Ohio state defensive lines. I think the linebackers Mm -hmm. are at least going to get close to, Although I think the real linebacker renaissance maybe happens next year, but I think the linebackers are going to still be much, much improved. 
Um, and then we'll just have to see. I just don't, I don't know what to expect from the safeties and the other cornerback this year. Obviously, Burke has things on lock. Yeah. Ohio State had, unless I counted wrong, which I easily could have, Ohio State had 36 sacks last year. Which was not sufficient. No, it was not. Uh, let's see here. Who will get? Who gets the majority of Haskell's playing time? Uh, yeah, it, it's Ty Lick Williams, right? I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, uh, I, I yeah. already said who I thought the defensive tackle breakdown was going to be this year. Uh, Austin says he wants 25 from the defensive ends, 10 from the defensive tackles, 10 from the linebackers, and five other. Um, I think the 25 from... I think you need to shift some of those defensive end sacks to the defensive tackles. Remember how many sacks Tyleek Williams had last year with not that many snaps. I don't have the snap counts in front of me, but he basically had the same number of sacks as Haskell Garrett with like, I don't know, a third or half or a quarter. I don't know of the snaps. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying Tyleek Williams is going to steal some of those sacks. Yep. Look at how many uh, sacks see. he had last year with a, an increment, a tiny little sliver of snaps compared to the other defensive linemen. Yeah. Uh, linebacker, linebackers here. Nomad wants to want, ask us how many tackles should we expect Hicks in the spring game? No, uh, not that <laughs> many. I, I, I don't no. know. I, I don't think they're going to tackle that much, to be honest with you. No, they're, they're not. They're not. So, I mean, how uh, many touches? Mm-hmm. Here, here's the thing. The, who, well, just just as a matter of fact, Knowles doesn't like to tackle in practice. Right? So, if you think that the spring games of the past had very little tackling, well, Jim Knowles just straight up does not like to tackle in practice. So, who, who will lead the team in interceptions this season? Who will lead the team in interceptions this season? We didn't talk too much about the defensive backs, or more so the corners. I, I don't think it'll be the corners. I think corners will be playing a lot of man, which does not necessarily lead to a ton of interception opportunities. I think for the most part, it's not going to be Burke. I think Burke, well, I don't even I don't want to say think. I know Denzel Burke is the best defensive back on the team, but I also just don't think people are going to throw towards him mm. hardly ever. Um, yeah. I, I, I want to say Hickman. It's my instinct yeah, to Hickman, say Hickman. Or but even Proctor. Proctor. Um, Austin said Ransom in the chat, and I think that's also a possibility. Um, I I need to see how these safeties play. Like, I need to see how this scheme will work. Not, and, and mm-hmm. I know, like, there's the Oklahoma State tape. I get that. Like, I want to see how this scheme works with the talent that Ohio State has. Yeah. All right. Uh, Kyle, uh, do we have any more quotes or any more questions? Uh, Let's see. I think there was here. Will Ruggles attempt a 60-yarder field goal? No. In the spring game? No. Oh, in the spring game? Maybe. I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> uh, I think there's one other question here. Um, who will be the spring game MVP that everyone will write about all summer? Okay. So that might sound like a duplicate question uh, that we did from la- from, from yesterday's episode. And Kyle, is it? But, yeah. but, but now we get to answer it on the defensive side. Yes. <laughs> So to me, once again, like if we're talking like breakout Kenyon, Ram- who who's the defensive equivalent of the Kenyon Rambo spring, uh, spring game player. Uh, I, I don't know, but um, it might be Jack Sawyer. Jack Sawyer had a hell of a spring game last year. Um, Jordan Hancock might be a really good answer. I don't know. The, 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 the defensive backs are going to get torched in the spring game. And like, I'm just telling you guys that right now. 
The defensive backs are working on a new system. They're and they're going up against the best pass defense or excuse me, the best pass offense in the country. They're working on a new system that they've only been working on for a few weeks. The the defensive backs aren't nearly as deep as the wide receivers. I'm just letting you guys know right now. Just just get get it in your head right now that the defensive backs are going to get torched in the spring game. And that's okay. Yes. It's fine. Yep. Um CJ uh, Austin says CJ Hicks. I think that's a good answer. I think Jordan Hancock is a good yeah, answer. Yeah. H- H- Hicks Hicks is the first one that comes to my mind on the defensive side. I think Reed watch out for Reed Carico. Um to me it's always like it's it's to me it's to to really fit this bill it's typically someone who is is like a second year player, maybe a third year player who has it like got a chance to bust out in a real game yet. And therefore is super motivated to make a name for themselves in the spring game. So it could be Michael Hall jr. He fits that bill as well. I think Michael Hall jr. Is going to surprise mm-hmm. some people. I think Reed Carrico is going to surprise some people. I really like the steel chambers, by the way. Yep. He's now had an off season to be a linebacker. He's not at yeah. a spring camp to be a steel chambers has not been a linebacker at Ohio state for more than a year, for more than a calendar year. Mm-hmm. So to watch steel chambers continue to develop will be fun. Um, and just again, in this new system, the linebackers are going to be so much better this year. You guys. Yeah. All right. Last question I have here from Buckeye Zach. Will Burke Cody proceed... Simon will be solid. Yes. Yeah. Gangland. Will Burke proceed to show out in, in the spring leading to a year of cornerback record book marks? Uh, in the fall. Yes. In the spring. No. Nah, Cause like whoever's the quarterback is just going to throw somewhere else. Yeah. Like there's just not even there. When you split the roster in half. There's going to be a defensive back out there up against a elite five-star wide receiver. And the defensive back is going to be a walk on. And who do you think CJ Stroud's going to throw at? It's, <laughs> it's not going to be Burke. All right. That's all the questions here that we have for today's episode. Awesome. Um, I don't feel like talking anymore, Kyle. So do you have anything in Kyle's corner for today's episode? Or did you, did you burn them all last episode? <laughs> uh, hold a sick Jared. Got himself a hat trick as we were recording. Nice. Stroud would go at Burke because competition. He's not in competition with Burke. He's in comp. Well, he's not really in competition with the other quarterbacks either, but he has in competition against the defense. <laughs> and quite frankly, I want my quarterback to be like, Oh, that, that's called a, that's called a, that's called a pre-snap read gangland. Oh, look, Denzel Burke covering my five-star wide receiver walk on covering my five-star wide receiver. That's a pre-snap read. Yeah, but it's the spring game. So score that touchdown. Yeah. Score that touchdown. Let's dunk on the five-star. Denzel Burke was a Mm four-star. All right. That's it, Jared. That's all. That's all I got here. Okay. Um, I guess that's it then. That's the end of the episode. Uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you again by playing to vapors. I'm going to start playing the same band on Monday and Tuesday. Like it, it makes, makes too much sense not to, I'm, I'm just going to start doing that for now on. Uh, the name of this song is machine said, maybe, uh, again, by playing to vapors. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is playing to vapors. Mm-hmm.